2021 is complete. Good or bad, you made it through. The year of many firsts, it will not be easily forgotten. The Black Book Yearbook will help you capsule the year that was 2021. Own your part part of history. history. Get your yearbook today at blacksinsanantonio.com. For the latest news and community activities, visit our companion site, blackvideonews.com, celebrating over 10 years of documenting the community. Welcome to Black Video News, the Black Friday edition. I'm your host, Dr. Mateen Diop. We are live in studio today. Happy to be back, excited, because you know right here at Black Video News, we bring all the hottest guests, all the hottest news, all the hottest events happening here in the city of San Antonio. And today, no different. I have a special guest with you today. I'm bringing my man all the way from Indianapolis, Indiana, student minister Nuri Muhammad from the Nation of Islam under the guidance of the Honorable Minister Louis Farrakhan. How you doing, Brother Nuri? Hey, Dr. Martin, I, I was doing good and now I'm even doing better. <laughs> now I get the chance to share space and time with you on this wonderful platform. Man, it is absolute. It's great to see you. Great to hear your voice. It's been a while. And uh, we're going to go into a few things today as it relates to the American Muslim uh, Awareness Month. I don't know if you're familiar with that, but it's something that was brought to our attention. And so I said, we got to get my brother Nuri on. So we're going to talk about a few things, man. But I just wanted to touch base with you before we get started, ask you how you've been doing during COVID. I know you dealt with a really personal tragedy in your family, but how you've been doing during COVID and dealing with all that, the, the family issues that you've been dealing with. Well, you know, by Allah's grace, uh, getting better and better uh, over time, navigating through the storm. And uh, like many of, of, of us, we had to make a pandemic uh, pivot uh, in many categories. And as long as we did that, you know, and I think I tried to do the same, stay in the same position, just turn in a different direction, not losing your footing uh, by the grace of Allah. Uh, we've been able to do that and we and my family and i we have been getting a lot of healing by helping other people so we uh we're doing pretty good by his grace and mercy and and really being fueled by aid and assisting our sisters and brothers struggling with various uh, mental health challenges yes sir are you are you back up and running at ma 74 it's ma 74 right Yes, sir. Oh, yeah. We've been back. We we actually we only were down. We, we only shut down for uh, about eight months. We were considered by the minister to be one of the pilot cities uh, that could open up to see if we could handle COVID. We already had businesses in our facility that were, were still operating uh, under COVID. So we had become pretty proficient at safety protocols so we've been up and operable and happy to be back on the road uh just left dayton uh this past weekend able to i uh, keynoted the uh african-american cultural festival that they do there uh we were in uh, detroit washington dc baltimore cleveland the over the last month so we've been back up and rolling and out in the field at home and abroad but yes 74 has been open and operating consistently uh for over a year and a half now well, we are certainly excited for you here this is the minister student minister nuri muhammad he's talking to us today at black video news he's the man that the minister farrakhan calls him a fireball in the nation of islam before i get ask you more questions how is the minister's health and and how is he looking these days well his last uh, was able to speak with him and see him a few weeks ago and he was in good health and in good good spirit uh, so that is his status and i hope that those in the viewing audience that you would definitely keep him and his family uh in your prayers and continue to feed on all you can that he has given us there's not a subject matter that exists as a problem in any community that the minister has at not, not at some time touched and addressed. So tap in and pray for that man. 
Absolutely, we certainly will. So we have student minister Nuri Muhammad with us today, and we're going to be talking about various issues as it relates to, uh, to the religion of Islam, and this is American Muslim Awareness Month. And we wanted to talk to you today, Brother uh, Nuri, just kind of about being an American Muslim. So your, your personal story, you know, how did you get into the Nation of Islam? Why did you join the Nation of Islam? Did you come from the church? If you can infuse all those into an answer, what would you say? <laughs> Yes, it, I did come from the a church background, and uh, I came into the ranks of the nation when I was 17 years old. Uh, at the time, you know, I grew up in the streets, uh, like most of our brothers and sisters that come up in the hood. And all we did in our community, all, all we did in our neighborhood is sold dope. So that's what I did for the majority of my young, young, young life. And... Uh, I got tired of it, didn't want to do it. And my girlfriend at the time had a father who was not in the nation, but he was a supporter. And he had all the books of the Most Honorable Elijah Muhammad and a lot of lectures of, of the Honorable Minister Louis Farrakhan. She gave me Message to the Black Man about the Honorable Elijah Muhammad book and two lectures. And kept asking me had I listened to him. And at that time I hadn't. And I finally put in the tapes and opened up that book and uh, it renegotiated my contract with life. And from that day, uh, at the age of 16, I started to study the teachings of the Honorable Elijah Muhammad and Islam. And I, and I studied it with the same type of commitment I had to hustle. And I, I took knowledge with my, as my goal, like I once took money. And I studied eight, nine, 10 hours every single day, even while I was in school. And uh, lo and behold, they heard me talk inside of the little study groups we were having. And I was 17, only three months in the nation. And they said, man, this, he, he needs to be on the rostrum. They put me on the rostrum. I didn't want to do it. And I spoke, everybody was clapping, standing. I was like, these people, they so nice. <laughs> and the rest has been, the rest has been history. So I heard a voice in, in my yes, mind say, this is what you were born to do. Yes, sir. But I wasn't for sure if it was Pookie or Ray Ray or cousin T-Rock talking to my, me. I didn't know if it was God or not. I hadn't been hearing God before, but I think it was God, Dr. Martin, because uh, this gift has taken me uh, all over the world, speaking and striving to uplift our people. So that, that is how I came in. I uh, wanted to get right when I was young, leaving the dope game. And anybody that knows about selling dope, you know it's just as hard to stop selling as it is to stop using. Mm -hmm. One's addicted to the drug, the other's addicted to the money, but both are fiends. Mm -hmm. So I was on the other side addicted to the money. And I, all I knew to get right was go to church. I did that, tried that, and I didn't feel like I was getting enough uh, strength to resist the pull of the streets until my girlfriend at the time introduced me to that book, Message to the Black Man, and two lectures by the minister. And that gave me strength. And she later, uh, a few months after I came in, she joined. And then uh, a year after that, we got married at the age of 19, and we just celebrated uh, our 28th year wedding anniversary. Wow, congratulations. You, look, you only look like you're 25 now, Brendan. How do you do, how do, you do that? You're only 25 oh, now. Man. Math don't make sense. Oh. Trying to trying to eat to live, think to live. Hey, you know this, brother Martin, that the, the honorable minister Louis Farcon said this once. He said, A bad relationship will bring out the worst in you and cause you to age prematurely. Mm. While a good relationship will bring out the best in you and make you more youthful. Mm. So I guess that from striving to think to live and follow how to eat to live, multiplied by being in a good relationship bringing the best out of me, making me more youthful. Multiply all that together, put that math together. That's, that's what produce, produces a, a youthful presence of self. Well, you sure are doing a good job, Brother Nuri. I, I want to dig Great. a little bit deeper into the American Muslim Heritage Month. In the Nation of Islam, if, if my dates and times are off, please correct me. But in the Nation of Islam, I understand there was a split uh, in 1975 or, or, or thereabouts. And, and we had an imam on the show the other day who, who talked about this split. 
and he said that this split with, it, with, the, with Most Honorable Elijah Muhammad's son went one way, the Honorable Minister Louis Farrakhan went another way. Can you kind of give us some context of what you know and how did the nation split? Is the nation splintered today? W what are your thoughts on that? Yes, it did happen. Um, and, you know, remember that whenever that God has raised up a messenger, the base word of messenger is message. What makes the messenger so magnetic and so great is the message that he, he propagates and teaches. So there never has been a time in the history of scripture. You can look at any of the 24,000 messengers, warners or prophets that are found in Bible and Quran. Never has there ever been a time whenever the government or the rulers of the world at that time or that town did not work against that messenger. Soon as that messenger was either taken off the scene by a death plot or left the scene by what they called death, soon as he was absent, they attacked his message. So when Jesus was crucified, after crucifixion of Jesus, they, they didn't leave his message alone, they crucified his message too. So it was when the Honorable Elijah Muhammad left the scene in 1975, they had already had writ, they already wrote inside of the counterintelligence program of J. Edgar Hoover, a specific stratagem they wanted to employ to weaken the, the power of the nation. And one of them was to convert it into a strictly religious group that was not interested in economics, take them away from the struggle for black freedom, justice, and equality, and make them more of a universal uh, group of appealing to, to all people. So take them away from economics, take them away from blackness, keep them focused strictly on religious expression. So soon as the Honorable Elijah Muhammad left, we watched that start to take place. Uh, various agents in the mosque, various agents in the nation, some paid, some unpaid, uh, started to weaken the resolve of the nation toward economic independence or toward building black business and toward the fight for freedom, justice, and equality for us as a people. And we got more into the uh, old world Islamic religious expression and got away from those things that made the nation what we were. So the minister seeing that this attempt to not just get rid of the messenger who had left, but to get rid of the message that made the messenger so great. He said, I can't let it happen. I will not allow his name to be written out of history as he is and as he was. So he stood back up. And from that standing uh, came a handful of soldiers that agreed with him. But for the most part, it was him, Minister Farrakhan, speaking at colleges and universities around the country that ignited and attracted a whole new cadre of soldiers to come and participate in what the world calls now the second rise uh, of the nation of Islam. And we are on that side of that. And from 1977 up until today, whenever he made it public, that we would be reestablishing the nation as the Honorable Elijah Muhammad taught, uh, we're here. And we love our Muslim brothers and sisters, no matter what school of thought they come from. And we accept them as our comrades and our fellow believing uh, soldiers. But we do have uh, from Allah to the Honorable Elijah Muhammad, a unique special methodology uh, that, that fixes the condition of the black man and woman in America. And at the same time, keeps us from deviating from any tenets or pillars of Islam. When you talk about Islam, I wanted to ask you your thoughts on this, this term called traditional Islam versus the nation of Islam, specifically under the, under the minister. Do you see there being a difference between traditional Islam and the nation of Islam? There is no difference in the fundamental principles of Islam. Uh, we have the same five pillars. We believe in one God, Allah, and all of his messengers and all their scriptures. We believe in prayer. We believe in charity. We believe in fasting, especially in the holy month of Ramadan. And we believe in Hajj or pilgrimage and jihad, making a holy war with self and wickedness in the world. 
same pillar, same principles. The difference between us and the rest of the Muslim world and is, is that what happened to the Muslim world is that Arab culture began to integrate into Islam. There's only five pillars, but there's an unspoken and unwritten six pillar of Islam in the Muslim world, which is Arab culture. We don't follow any Arab culture. We follow all the tenets of Islam and all of the sayings and the ways of Muhammad as uh, described in the Holy Quran and in his Sunnah or his way. But we don't follow Arab culture where we wear jalabiyas and uh, beards and kufis and roll our pants legs up for, to keep sand from getting into our clothes when we live in the hood on pavement. Uh, we use toothbrush, not uh, a, 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 a mishwak. Uh, those those are, are aspects of Arab culture that have integrated into Islam. And many people will say, unless you look like a foreigner, then, then you're not a real Muslim. But Muhammad, peace be upon him, said that the Muslim is not judged off of his skin complexion or what he wears. He said, the best among you is he or she who is most careful of their duty. So religion, religion is not what you believe or what you preach. Real religion is what you practice. What you practice. We're talking to student minister Nuri Muhammad here at Black Video News, the Black Friday Live edition. We're going to come right back with a couple more questions after this break. Stick around. Um, can I get the now bar, please? One dollar. Have a good one. You got it. Hey, what's going on? Hey. Let me get a now bar. Sure. One dollar. Appreciate you. You got it. Nothing to do this week? Don't miss another event. Go to blacksinsanantonio.com for our event calendar. The home of the largest business directory in San Antonio with an African American focus. Sign up today for our weekly e-blast and text message alerts. Help us make this a better community. Connect. Empower. Grow. Welcome back to Black Video News, the Black Friday edition. I'm your host, Dr. Mateen Diop, and we're talking to the man that the Honorable Minister Louis Farrakhan calls the fireball. Student Minister Nouri Muhammad is talking to us today about the American Muslim Movement and the American Muslim uh, Month here that we were told about in the United States. And we're just talking about, about a few things. But before the break, Brother Nouri, you were talking about uh, the difference between Arab culture and what might be considered traditional Islam. And when we were on break, we actually had a couple of calls, and one of the, one of the callers asked, is the nation of Islam, Minister Louis Farrakhan, is he accepted in the traditional Muslim world? Yes, accepted greater in the, the Muslim world than in the United States of America. The, the greatest, when the minister travels the world, he's received as a head of state, uh, whether it is in Egypt, whether it is in Saudi Arabia, the holy city of Mecca. Uh, and he has been and has met with the scholars of Islam in the holy city of Mecca and spent days with them. They talking to him, him talking to them, and they question him about our belief in the reality of God in the person of Master Fahd Muhammad or other aspects that looks to be a little different in, in perception uh, from Quranic verses than what they were traditionally raised to see. And all of the times, all of the discussions, they learned from him and they have never uh, stopped saluting him as that great Muslim that has the most influence of any other Muslim uh, in, in the world. So it is only the, the, those that come to America or really 
it is only us, unfortunately, the so-called American Negro that wants to be a Muslim. It's, it's so deep, Dr. Mateen, because our self-hatred as a people is so deep on a subconscious level that anything we join on to become a part of, we began to adopt the culture of the people that are the dominant in that particular organization, group, or religion. So when you see Islam, and it's traditionally been many Arabs in Islam, a billion or more Arabs in Islam, because of our self-hatred, because of our low self-esteem and our poor self-worth as a people, as soon as we jump into Islam, we began to adopt the culture as if it is the faith. And we began to act like we've got an accent knowing good and well you from the hood in San Antonio. We start dressing as they dressed 1400 years ago. And we, we feel a sense of upliftment, losing ourselves into another people's culture, not necessarily losing ourselves in the way of Allah. So what the Honorable Elijah Muhammad and the minister have represented to us is a new culture that's not Eastern nor Western. It's a specific way of talk, standing, sitting, dressing, and eating that came from God to the Honorable Elijah Muhammad, multiplied by the teachings of Islam as found uh, in the Holy Quran and the way of Muhammad found in his hadith or his sunnah. So it's, this is who we are, but we don't do the Arab culture, we do a culture that came from the honor of Elijah Muhammad that God gave him multiplied by the teachings, the wisdom, and the moral uh, ethics that Muhammad was, was given by Allah. Yes, sir. Let me, let me take you back, Brother Nori, to this question that it seems like every, it's discussed everywhere on, in every barbershop, black barbershop in America, this, this uh, discussion about uh, Malcolm X and the Nation of Islam and and did the nation do this to Malcolm? Did Malcolm do? Can you kind of give us a synopsis of what, how Malcolm is treated, his name, his his legacy is treated in the Nation of Islam? Well, first of all, Brother Malcolm X has probably brought more people into the ranks of the nation, even after his passing, than many of us that say we believe have done living. How many soldiers? have been awakened to the truth by the autobiography of Malcolm X. Most of the soldiers that come into the ranks of the nation at some point uh, have been touched by the autobiography of Malcolm X and it piqued their interest to want to study deep, deeper the teachings of the Honorable Elijah Muhammad. There is a mythological uh, uh, watered down authorized King James version of what happened between Malcolm X and the Honorable Elijah Muhammad in the atmosphere. Uh, so the math is coming out whenever the exoneration of those who were sentenced for the killing of Malcolm X that was supposed to be in the nation have been set free recently. Lawsuits uh, have been filed and accepted and restitution is going to be paid. So these are, these are things on that side. And then, of course, the myth that Malcolm X had went to Mecca and seen white Muslims and then came back and changed uh, his philosophy. Well, he had already been to Mecca in 1959 with the Honorable Elijah Muhammad and seen white Muslims. And we were always taught in all of the writings and teachings of the Honorable Elijah Muhammad about our white Muslim brothers uh, in the East and even in Europe. So that was not an epiphany uh, that he had. It's just unfortunate that the, the history revisionists have always made sure that they put their hands on our leaders. And there's not one great black teacher, organizer, or leader that has ever come up among our people that they have not revised and watered down the real legacy of that man, his message, and his work. We don't know the truth about Marcus Garvey. We don't know the truth about Noble Drew Ali. We don't know the truth about Booker T. 
we 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 got we got sound bites and bits and pieces of Dr. King, but we don't know the last two years of his life and what he represented. You don't they don't play no speeches from, from the last two years of Dr. King. They don't tell the world that Malcolm X wanted to come back into the nation and wrote a letter to the Honorable Elijah Muhammad that's in the Congressional Library in Washington, D.C. at once and now I believe is in the African American Museum. They're, they don't tell you that. They don't tell you that, that the Honorable Elijah Muhammad told him, come on home, but you, I want you to help put some of the fires out that you started. And the first time that he took the mic after hearing that was in the Audubon Ballroom. And before he could put out the fire, someone opened fire on him. These are missing ingredients uh, from the history. So in that sense of what he's been able to do, of course, while he was alive as a great representative, bringing soldiers to the ranks and even now gone from his autobiography and the study of the X. Because at some point, you're going to want to know, well, if this X made Malcolm Little, such a big man. Is there anybody around that's still giving out these X's? Because I want to be big like him. I want to go from Detroit Red to a man that shook up the whole world with an eighth grade education like Malcolm did. Well, we, 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 once that starts happening, you have to connect the dots and you find that there is a man. His name is Minister Farrakhan, who is now in the seat of the Honorable Elijah Muhammad, giving out X's the same way the Honorable Elijah Muhammad gave him an X. So many Detroit Reds have come into the ranks because of that Detroit Red that became Malcolm X. I got to say, I'm, I'm guilty if you want to use that word because that was the book that changed my thinking forever and also led me to learn more about the Most Honorable Elijah Muhammad. So I have to agree with you wholeheartedly wow. on that. The Autobiography of Malcolm X is the book that literally, the first book I ever read, and it's the mm. book that changed my life. So I have to agree with you on that, Brother Nuri. So let me yeah. go uh, pivot a little bit, uh, but kind of still on the, the whole concept of Arab culture and, and Islam in America, the, the concept of women in Islam. Has, is the concept of women in Islam the same as, as, I guess you would call it Arab culture, excuse me if I'm saying it wrong, Arab culture with the, with the, with the way the women dress and being subservient to the men? Are the role in women in the nation of Islam the same as the role of women in Arab culture or Islam in the way you explain it? Well, unfortunately, uh, just as it is in all religious movements, uh, there's a verse in the Quran that says it like this. You did not divide up the religion into sex, S-E-C-T-S, sex and parties until after knowledge had come to you. Some, for some reason, when people start studying and something in the teaching stands out the most to them, they try to take that little piece of it and create whole parties, sex, or what they call in Christianity, denominations. But if you take the word denomination, the prefix D means to divide. Nami in Latin means name. So a denomination is dividing up a nation by using a different name. Unfortunately, just as there's a Baptist, a Second Baptist, a Pentecostal, there's a Church of God in Christ, uh, there's, there's, there's all of Methodist, African Methodist, there's Episcopalian, there's all these different denominations Break of that Christianity. Down, Brother, Brother. Denomination, there, break that down one more time. D, not, D meaning divide. Nami in Latin meaning name, nation. De denomination is when you divide up a nation mm. by changing the name. So when you have African Methodist, Episcopalian, Church of God in Christ, Pentecostal, Apostolic, Baptist, Second Baptist, you are, you are dividing up a nation of believers by changing the name. Well, there's 666 different sects or denominations in Christianity, and there's over 72 different sects uh, in Islam or denominations in Islam. And what happens is people take a part of, and they normally make it more important than the rest of, start talking it the most, and then they get extreme in it, and then you have this kind of expression. So in the Holy Quran, when it deals with the sisters, it tells us that 
the male is not like the female and the female is not like the male, but the male and the female were created two twin halves of a single essence. So the male and the female have the same rights, privileges, and responsibilities in Islam when it's practiced properly. It says for the sisters to lower the hem of their garment and uh, to cover their hair. But whenever you get people that take that and want to make it louder and then go a little extreme in it, then you go from covering the hair and wearing modest clothing. Now you get to covering the face with just the eyes showing in what the form of a burqa is. So this is just an expression of a denominational uh, Islamic expression divided up a nation by a name and it's going to the extreme uh, in one of the commandments uh, or laws or rules of Islam. In the Holy Quran, there's nothing about women walking 10 paces behind you, but that is practiced oftentimes in Arab culture, but that's not Islam. A real man doesn't want his woman 10 paces behind. How could you fulfill your mandate as a Muslim man or as a man to be maintainer, protector, provider? How can you protect something that's 10 steps behind you? So no, not the behind, but beside every strong man has been a strong woman. So this is whenever you get people that start again, accidentally or on purpose, mixing in Arab culture with the religion and corrupting the practice of religion by introducing Arab culture. It's no different than Christmas trees inside of a church, even though Jeremiah 10 says that those who go out and cut down the tree of the workman with the ax and fasten it that it moveth not and deck it with silver and gold, they are heathens. That's a paganistic practice that's now been inserted inside of religion. Nothing in the Bible about an Easter bunny. There's nothing in the Bible about a, about a Santa Claus or eight reindeer. There's Jesus and 12 disciples, but not a Santa and eight reindeer. But you get mixture of paganism, mixture of Caucasian culture inside of the teachings of Jesus, and people practice that in the name of Jesus. Likewise, you have Arab culture that is integrated in the Islam and people practice Arab culture in the name of Muhammad. Denominationalism. Denominationalism. Sex and parties that came after knowledge. Hmm. We're talking to student minister Nuri Muhammad of the Nation of Islam under the guidance of Honorable Minister Louis Farrakhan right here on Black Friday Live, Black Video News Edition. But Nuri, I'll ask you before I ask you my last question, I kind of wanted to you to touch on just just a little bit of, of when, it, when it comes to, to women in Islam, are there are women allowed to be ministers? And, and, and is your message, this is a two, two part question, are women allowed to be uh, ministers in the nation? And is your message accepted in the black Christian church? Are you even invited to the black Christian church? Yes, sir. Thank you, Brother Martin. And yes, any position of leadership that a male can hold inside the nation of Islam, not only can a female hold, but many females do. We have many female uh, ministers, captains, secretaries, many female protocol directors that are over different mosques, study groups, and different aspects of nation building. The Honorable Elijah Muhammad said that a woman should rise to the level of whatever her God-given talents allow her to rise to. So all of the isms um, that exist in the world, when people join different religious movements, unfortunately, those isms are still in the people. So you have a classism, you have racism, you have sexism, you have polytheism. You have a lot of isms that are in people that are inside of faith that cause them to practice uh, inappropriate. So the teachings, the teachings are perfect, but the people are not. The program is perfect, but the people that run the program are not. But in the nation, the Honorable Elijah Muhammad, he has been and is the greatest liberator of women that has ever existed in the, on the planet. Look at these terms. 
The Honorable Elijah Muhammad said there's no such thing as a no good woman. Any no good woman was made that way by a no good man. The Honorable Elijah Muhammad said that a nation can rise no higher than its woman. He said the woman is the first nurse, the first doctor, the first teacher. The minister said it like this. He said mama is God in baby language. So when you look at that dynamic, a nation can rise no higher than its woman. When you understand that concept, then who could push a woman down and expect their nation or cause to go up? So in this nation called the nation of Islam, we don't push our women down. We don't put our women behind. We don't push them to the side. We uplift them and ask them whatever God-given talent they have, bring it to the table and let's move sexism out the way. Let's move this classism out the way and let's allow them to be what God brought them on the planet to be, teachers, nurturers, leaders in whatever form they can. Yes, sir. And the Black Christian Church, do they, do they let you in? Do they lock the door when you walk up? How, how yes. does that relationship? Of course, the, the, we are accepted. And, you know, most people, whenever they listen to the minister or any of his students, they can bear witness that we can express and talk about Jesus uh, better than most pastors can. So I know he, the minister, has spoken in many churches, and I have as well. In fact, I've been at a church right there in San Antonio uh, a few years back. And when we came to that church, it was packed to capacity, and there were 25,000 people that watched it live uh, from the church. And it's still in the atmosphere right now getting great feedback with millions of views, the message that we delivered there. So yes, uh, you know, that's our, that's our home. That's where we, that's where we came from. And the message of the Honorable Elijah Muhammad said this, he said that once the black preacher uh, gets it right, we'll be free overnight. So we go there with the goal. Say, say that one not, more time, brother. Say that one more time. Once the black preacher gets it right, we'll be free overnight. So we, we go there not with the goal of trying to pull them away from where they are. We go there with the goal of putting a little fertilizer and enhancing what they already have. That's our brothers and our sisters uh, in the cause and in faith. And the real truth, Dr. Martin, and we all know it, Nobody asked George Floyd whether he went to the church or the mosque. They didn't ask Sandra Bland whether she went to the hall or went to the masjid. They, they, they didn't ask Freddie Gray or Tamir Rice or Trayvon Martin. No, none of, none of those that have been victims of wicked, racist police officers that have taken their life. Nobody was asked before they were dealt that injustice. Do you read the Bible or the Holy Quran? So if we are treated as one by our enemies we look like some fools sitting here having religious debates and arguments while we're dying in the streets no no our our, our children muslim christian jew it make all black children are in the sea of sin drowning right now and we look like some fools running up here i am a, a minister of, of, of islam i got my rope i'll throw it out there and it's too short to reach my little young brother that's drowning here come the Christian. He throws his rope out there, and his rope is too short to save. Here comes the Hebrew. He throws his rope out there. His rope is too short to save. Well, we got one or two options. Either we can stand on the bank of the river and argue over whose rope is the best, or we can use some common sense and tie all three ropes together and save that suffering, drowning young soldier. That's where we are right now. We are past philosophical debate and playing word gymnastics in the back of coffee shops, talking about whether it's hither thou go off or, or, or north, north thou surety, is it? No, we, we've got to solve the problem of dying black people. And then after that, we can have this religious discussion over philosophy. But right now, we're sending out an SOS. We need all hands on deck. Look, the Calvary ain't coming. The bridge broke and the levee gave way. It's up to us to save ourselves. You heard it, student minister Nuri Muhammad. 
Muhammad Moss, number 74, Indianapolis, Indiana, under the guidance of the Honorable Minister Louis Farrakhan. If you have any questions, you heard it right here. You heard what he had to say. Brother Nuri, how can uh, uh, people get in contact with you? And I know I want you to talk about it for a few minutes, just to, the books that you have out right now, but how can somebody hear you and contact you and all that stuff? Thank you, Dr. Martin. The easiest way is uh, nurimuhammad.com. Uh, that's where all of my messages and all my books we have a latest book we just released about a month ago titled A Well-Made Man. And by the grace of God, it became the number one new release uh, on Amazon, nurimuhammad.com. Find me on social media. I'm on all of the platforms. Look for that name, uh, Nuri Muhammad. They, got, they have me shadow banned right now on, on Instagram, but look for me. Uh, they've got several dummy accounts they look like mine. Mine is the one that has 91,000 some odd followers on there. So that's the one. Uh, plug in. You can text me 317-548-8508 and be a part of uh, a community where I send out every message that I do. I send out a free digital copy straight to your phone for free. 317-548-8508. Tap in and I look forward to building with you all soon thank you so much dr martin and i hope that those in the viewing audience that you will take this as a commercial uh, to look deeper into what god gave to a black man from among us named elijah muhammad and what god has given to another black man from among us the honorable minister Lewis Park. Brother Nuri, we want to thank you for joining us today, brother, and we will talk to you soon. This is Black Friday, Black Friday Live, Black Video News. I'm your host, Dr. Mateen Diop. We just had a great conversation with Student Minister Nuri Muhammad. Come back next time when we have more great guests. We'll see you next time. Peace.